Abhin is going to speak about the most important topic, which is about the water conservation in the farm. Thank you, Rajiv Bhai, for uh, calling Mr. Vinay and emphasizing on about water conservation, on about a lot of things about water, about pond liners. So, in fact, it makes it a lot more important and a lot more easy, you know, to tell us about what are the importance of pond liners. But before that, you know, selecting the right method and the material is very much important. Also, I would like to introduce Mr. Pratik Bansali, who handles our operations, uh, where I own Sonite Corporation. Uh, we are the distributors for AgriPlus for Karnataka, and I'm a partner for Midfield, uh, where we import and install pond liners. Now, basically, what are pond liners? And the, these are basic synthetic membrane liners that are impervious to lipid flow. That is, they don't allow water to pass through it. So it holds on to the water. Basically used for landfills, pond lining, retention basins, reservoirs, canal lining, and various other applications. But here, we are focusing only on the pond liners. There are various traditional methods of storing water, but the more organized sector came in the form of concrete tanks. Uh, but being there are various disadvantages. One, not too flexible, so subject to expansion and contraction due to weather changes. Eventually cracks, expensive to construct in comparison to pond liners, expensive to repair it to. Pond liners. Now, you must have heard of various grades of pond liners. The basic is the LDP, low density polyethylene, the HDP, high density polyethylene, PVC, polyvinyl chloride, EPDM, ethylene, propylene, diene, monomer. Now, just to give you a basic about these liners available in order to help you choose the right kind of liner, the first the basic is the LDP liner. These are the, basically the common grade of films used as it is very flexible, but in comparison to HDP, it is not as strong and not as puncture resistant. Then comes the HDP, the high density polyethylene, comparatively very, very strong, chemical resistant, but little less flexible compared to LDP and highly UV resistant. Then comes the PVC. PVC is again a flexible, smoother liner, easily foldable and factory sealing is possible, which means a large area of a pond also can be pre-sealed at the factory and transported very easy to the sites. Can be used to store portable water too. EPDM. Now, EPDM basically is a synthetic rubber, flexible puncture resistant and highly UV resistant material. It is expensive compared to HDP, used for basically for landscape ponds, artificial lakes. Now, if you look at all this, you know, different kind of liners, the LDP, HTP, PVC and EPDM, HTP ranks among the highest in terms of our application, the agricultural application, where it is strong, chemical resistant, least flexible and of course, aesthetics are very important, but not as much as landscape ponds or artificial lake. So, if you look at all this comparison, HTP stands strongest in terms of its own characteristics plus the pricing in comparison to PVC as well as EPDM. Before the right thickness of the liner is decided, now that we have come to the conclusion that HDP is comparatively better, next comes the thickness. But before the uh, thickness is decided, the line, uh, pond has to be executed. Now to execute the pond, there are few basic preparations that need to be done. Now these can be explained this way. A minimum slope of 70 degrees is better. No, oval, no corners, it should have an oval shape and there should be space outside the pond area to lock the liner. The advantages of following these uh, precautions is first by having a slope, the installation and finish is much, much better. The oval shape avoids wrinkles and wastage, proper utilization of material. As the material available in the corner, there are a lot of wrinkles which need to be cut and installed in order to have a proper finish, in order to have a proper locking to the entire pond. The locking of the liner ensures that the liner doesn't give away when the pond is full. The thickness is again dependent on the surface, the smooth surface and the rough surface after the excavation is done. In case of very rough conditions, a geotextile is advisable. A geotextile can be placed before installing the liner. There are basically four uh, types of HTP liners that are available. The 300 microns, 500 microns, 750 microns and the 1000 microns. Now, few companies guarantee based on their own production, but uh, the general guarantee should be for 300 microns 3 years, 500 microns 5 years 
750 microns 7 to 8 years and 1000 microns about 10 years. Now for a small pond of 300 to 400 square meters a 300 micron should do but please remember a 300 micron film is only 100 microns more than your greenhouse polyfilm. In order for you to understand the thickness it is only 100 microns more than your greenhouse polyfilm. Still, if the condition of the soil is too rough, we would not advise you to go for a 300 micron film. 500 microns ponds up to 1 acre, but still you need to check the soil surface. 750 microns, 1000 microns, 1 acre and above. And you can check the guarantee. 750 microns, 7 to 8 years, 1000 micron, up to 10 years. Again, this, I would like to emphasize on the point that the soil surface is very, very important when you select the liner. If even a small pond, if the surface area is very, very rough, preferably go for a 750 or a 1000 micron pond liner. These are the basic checkpoints that you need before purchasing a liner. First, prefer the HDPE liner uh, you know, versus the LDPE liner. Try to go for a 100% virgin material, make a check on it, go for a good brand. Black color liners are preferably better compared to any other color of liners because they contain carbon and by default they are highly UV resistant. Take a UV treated guarantee, that is every liner should come with a warranty. Higher weights, so the ceiling is less. There are liners available up to 8 meters, so the less number of ceilings, better life of the liner. Better handling of metal while installation after sales service. See, in, when it comes to installation, now for example, it's a pond liner, which is a very, very heavy pond liner. For example, uh, sometimes a liner can weigh up to 500, 600 kilos also. It should not be rolled and pulled towards the pond. There should be proper methodology for that. The first, uh, you know, the picture will show you that. Second, if you are entering inside the pond, if it's a large pond, do the ceiling. The footwear is very, very important. Basic, for example, the ladder which is placed over there, you know, it has, it has been covered in the bottom, so it doesn't damage the liner. Before locking the liner, there are sandbags which are placed. Few areas, they're placing stones to prevent the liner from moving away, which itself damage the liner at the main point. If you're placing in a motor, please keep any, uh, you know, a folded liner below that so it doesn't damage the liner. Now installation. When it comes to small ponds, generally it is pre-sealed at the factory and supplied, so that installation can be done on your own. And for larger areas, it is better to do installation at site. Now there are different ways of installation. Different machines are used. Few people they use only the hand sealing machine, but it starts giving away in due course. The best method is to use these kind of sealing machines. These are automatic robotic machines which works on precision, robotic which moves on its own. Sealing is very very uh, you know precise and the damage is very very less comparison to the hand sealing. It doesn't give away very easily especially the corners. It gives away when it is sealed by a advantage of using a good liner. First by using a good liner large areas can be covered again depending on the thickness can be repaired over the years. This one is using a poor quality liner. One starts deteriorating early. Regular replies due to inconsistency in the thickness of the liner. At times irreparable due to non-UV or ineffective UV as the basic raw material itself is a weak raw material. If it's not 100% virgin grade raw material, even if you put a certain portion of UV to ensure that it lasts a little more, it doesn't. It gives away very fast and especially these liners cannot be repaired. It becomes very, very difficult. Securing the pond area. This is a very, very important aspect of pond because in by mistake, if somebody falls into the pond liner, in the pond area, it is very difficult for them to come out. It is actually not possible. Animals, humans. So it is very important that you secure the entire pond area. Once the pond is secured, prevent the evaporation by covering it with a shade net. Also, it will prevent the growth of algae. Now basically rainwater harvesting generally refers to the rainfall captured from the roof of the building sheds providing good water with reasonable harvest with only few showers. In our case, you know, we need to connect our greenhouse gutters in order to harvest the entire rainwater. For example, 1 mm of rainfall in 10,000 square meters of greenhouse area will collect close to 1 lakh liters of water. So it is always advisable that you connect your greenhouse gutters to the pond. This is one of the most effective ways of collecting rainwater. As uh, Dr. Subaya mentioned this morning, 
uh, this can give an average of what is the area of the pond that you require or how much water you require. This is an approximate calculation in terms of your pond. It can be much larger. For roses, for example, 80,000 plants per acre with a 400 to 500 ml plant requirement per day, 40,000 liters per day, 30 days comes to 12 lakh liters. 12 lakh liters into 3 months, about 36 lakh liters is basic requirement of this. Now for the particular area, need you need 150 feet by 75 feet by 10 feet depth in order to get a 32 lakh liter pond. Actually require a little more because you have to leave a little bit of buffer and a little bit of evaporation. And the liner required is about 1800 square meters. These are a few ponds done by our company. Uh, this is the Toyota Kiloskar pond where they are holding about 21 lakh liters. They had a particular issue of uh, you know a large area in center there were a lot of cementing but they had to be terminated which we could easily do it. This is in Bagalkot. Very recently uh, a farmer of ours who has installed our pond liner uh, was covered by News 9 uh, for his uh, story of uh, you know rainwater harvesting. This is a small video about it. Now, the water crisis in Bengaluru has affected all levels of society in its own way. One such business that is affected due to these crises is the business of nurseries. But there are few exceptions that have successfully managed to tackle these crises even during this hot summer. Water crisis this unprecedented and scorching summer has affected everyone. But it is not only the common people that are affected by the crisis, but also some industries that depend completely on water. One such business is of nurseries. About 100 nurseries are located in a 10 kilometer radius around the big banyan tree of the southern outskirts of the city in villages such as Kettoharli, Ramoharli and Bhimanakuppe. These nurseries supply flora for various projects and also export saplings and flowers to states across India. Tech parks, hotels and hospitals across the city are among their clients. But scarcity of water hit the nurseries hard this summer. Even the pre-monsoon rains over the last week have not solved the problem of water crisis. Due to water shortage, many nurseries here are unable to expand. As of now, they immediately need to survive this season. Although most of the nurseries here are facing water crisis, there are some that are not worried about the water crisis and are continuing their job without worrying about the water. You might be surprised to hear this, but it's a fact. Yes. There is a nursery in this very place where water shortage is not a problem for the past few years. There is plenty of water stored in the tanks that is sufficient to fulfill the needs of this nursery that is spread over 12 acres of land. Balraj decided to construct large water tanks that could collect lakhs of litres of water. created five tanks with a capacity of one crore liters. The tanks were coated with special sheets that were imported from Israel so as to retain the water that is gathered into the tanks. A uh, nursery requires more water than the agriculture, armor agriculture. Every day we want to water the plants. Then we thought of harvesting the water, rain harvesting systems. So then we started digging the big water pond. So whereas our entire uh, polyosis has been, our farm is up approximately 60% is covered with the polyosis. Where whenever the rain comes, there is plenty of water flow flows into the waste, into the sideways. So then we started uh, digging the pond where our uh, water tank uh, capacity is almost 80 lakh liters in this farm. Which every, every drop, I think 90% of the water uh, rain we cover here, we, we uh, harvest here. The entire nursery is connected with water pipes. One set of pipes carry the water collected on the roofs of the greenhouses and polyhouses and take it to the large tanks that have been constructed in the nursery. The 
The other set of pipes help in pumping up the water from the tanks and distributing the small tanks through which the plants were watered. Sometimes they get electricity only for 15 minutes before it is disconnected, making it more difficult to water the plants. But Balraj has even managed to tackle this problem. As the water is gathered in the tanks, he need not depend on the electricity to pump water from bore wells to water the plants. Well, there are many like Balraj who are adopting this method of rainwater harvesting after looking at the results at this nursery. Sooner or later, there will be more people who will adopt the methods of rainwater harvesting, and that will be the day when no nursery will have to depend on the authorities for keeping their nurseries green. Chetanya Mangure for News 9, Bengaluru. I would like to call you Mr. Murli from Hoskote. He has uh, you know, installed our pond liner, uh, but his story is very heartening. He had to shift his entire project to another area because of lack of water. Uh, can I Mr. Murli please? Thanks for uh, having to call me here. We have 10,000 square meters of greenhouse in Hoskote located. Uh, we find uh, very difficult uh, in the water. Actually, four bore wells are failed. So we find very difficult in uh, water management <coughs> so in that uh, situation uh, you find very difficult so what to do we are in very uh, depressed manner so what to do in that situation so one idea we got it a right pond liner we installed pond liner uh, in greenhouse uh, we are collecting a lot of water so we completely survived uh, in that middle uh, situation, we thought to uh, shift our greenhouse entire area, so everything is, uh, so, uh, we are saved totally. Uh, today, uh, from this uh, two, three years, we are collecting a lot of water uh, to this uh, water pond. It is five years over the project we have made. First two years, we find very difficult. After pond liner, we are very happy to say that uh, any project we do, the farmers, you please begin with very good water pond. Mr. Murli? Pond area. Pond area, 75 feet to 35 feet. Uh, Come here. It was uh, 75 feet by 30 feet in width and depth was somewhere around 18 feet. How much water is it? It has somewhere around 4.5 lakh liters, yeah, I think. 4.5 lakh liters of water. It comes one, one and a half month. Uh, what one and a half month uh, I can use in 10,000 square meter for uh, polyos uh, for uh, uh, vegetable cultivation. So the quantity so what is the cost? Uh, Sir? Cost, Co uh, cost about uh, somewhere liner. around 1.5 lakh rupees at that time. It was done in 2011. Liner guy approximately 1.5 lakh rupees. Huh? 500 micron. Guinea's guy Israel se mangai hua tha. Wo lagaya hua tha unko. Approximately, uh, excavation cost is that uh, Excavation cost uh, divided about uh, 30,000 rupees. NHP, National Agriculture Board, we got subsidy. How much? Uh, that subsidy is totally from including greenhouse, we got it. It's separately, I don't know what is, how much I get. In a 100,000 litre water pond, what would be the approximate requirement of uh, lining? 100,000 litres. Uh -huh. Just for a calculation focus. Normally calculation I have done, including excavation, it will cost you somewhere around 18 to 21 paisa per litre. If you calculate overall, it will come around 18 to 21 paisa per litre, including excavation. Just the liner, uh, liner will cost you in between 8 paisa to 10 paisa per litre. What is the minimum quantity? Somebody should not come and tell you 5 litres may quit. So area, area. Just to say 100,000 litres. Okay. 1 lakh liters. So what is the, so 1 lakh liter will Sir, approximately, approximately. Here it is 40 feet by 20 feet by 5 feet approximately. Market mein abhi jo aap bol raha hai ki uh, rough surface you are suggesting uh, some different texture like. What is the cost uh, per square meter that? For? 
No, some texture like material. That yes. is a geotextile. A geotextile. It yes. ranges from 40 rupees per square meter to 110 rupees a square meter depending on the GSM. Oh. 40 rupees to 110 rupees a square meter depending on the GSM. So that is called the geotextile. Then uh, it is going to double the cost, right? See, if it is a very sub rough surface and you want to use a lower thickness of micron of, for example, you want to use a 500 micron in very large areas and the soil surface is very rough, but still you want to use the 500 micron, then we suggest a geotextile. Otherwise, preferable, as I mentioned, if the soil surface is too rough, go for the 750 or the 1000 micron. That is much more safer. As you rightly said, yes, geotextile will add to the cost, but if you want to protect the liner, that is a must. I mean, mostly we have to better to protect the cover. Yes, sir. Yeah. For animals. By putting the shade net, it will prevent evaporation. And also... The size becomes then, uh, where do you put the pores and all? Now, coming to your question of, uh, you know, uh, nets. See, this is how the client has done. It's on the sideways, no? No, he's done it. He's on the top. It's not on the side. It's not totally on the top. Entire thing is shade nets. Cables are there. That's the the uh, you know picture on the left. You can see the cables, the GIS on the right hand side uses. Otherwise, you know it is locked. So, Bhavin, I have two questions. What, what is the rate of evaporation described in this? That's first question. Second, percent. Second 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 percent. Yeah, it can be, you know, closed with a weed mat, but weed mat, you have to be very careful that, you know, uh, the permeability of water is a little less compared to the net, compared to the net. Of course, weed mat is better, but what happens is weed mat tends to become heavy because it doesn't allow too much of water. So, there is a chance of water stagnating, collecting on top and it will damage the entire structure. Weed mat, as you rightly said, technically, it is good. But comparatively, nets are always better. This is our practical experience. In a large area, they use weed mat, but due to the entire water collection, it had collapsed. So, it had to be redone. So, nets are always better. One more question. If there is a damage somewhere, yes. you need to replace the entire liner? Or? If it is a good quality liner, it need not be replaced. The Only that particular portion can be sealed. Here. If it is a, if the quality of the liner itself is weak, it's a basic. It asks you to uh, evacuate all the water. If it is at the base, yes, you will have to. Presently, what we are doing is that based on your the availability of pond, okay, we try to use the major uh, you know portion of the width available, irrespective of the pond area. If the width of the liner is high, we can manage it in such a way that it can be laid very easily. So, you don't have to worry about any specific size. See, these are the basic things. If you use a gradient and if you use a, oh, if it's an oval shape, irrespective of the size, we can manage with any width of the liner. That should not be an issue. What I mean to is, minimum wastage, minimum cuttings, like 8 meters and 8 meters you join, uh. only one single joint, yes. all the way. Uh. So, what should be the pond size and what should be the slope and what should be the outside exposure, 1.5 meters outside for securing and all those things. See, on, once the pond area is ready, outside... I want the pond size from you. Pond I don't have any what is the area outside. that you would like to cover? What is the capacity? Like 10 lakh liters. Suppose it's 10 lakh liters. What is the basic for us for the liner so minimum wastage of the liner because you will be charging on the square meter exactly no irrespective of the width irrespective of the area we are not going to pass the wastage to you it is not going to be passed to you suppose yours is a thousand square meter area we are going to calculate exactly as per that and we are going to supply it to you in case there is you know in the width is not being managed we are not going to pass it on to you we calculate a certain portion of material on the outside we calculate about three to four percent maximum five percent which cover ups everything which covers up every you know in case the shape is not you know too even it covers up everything so there is never going to happen where we're going to pass on the excess material charges to you that will never happen irrespective of the width size uh, the pond you take it on a turnkey basis uh, we don't uh, handle the excavation uh, we only, uh, you know, do the installation of the liners. Liner. Yes. It is not a rough surface. How do we ensure that it is not a rough surface? See, basically, if there are too many stones below, if there are any sharp objects which you think will damage the liner, which I think you can decide very easily, you can take the samples of the liners, the 500 micron, 750,000. You, you can yourself analyze, you know, once you know, have the surface, see the liner. 
you will you also be able to say if it's you know suitable or no what is the slope you recommend see we generally uh, you know recommend minimum at, at least a 70 degree slope how can we harvest uh, surface runoff into the farm pond uh presently uh, you know uh, the greenhouse if you have it's the best system yeah. otherwise surface now for example i can give you a live practical example of toyota kiloskar for example what they have done is the entire factory area okay is been lined that is they have had drains throughout the entire area lined with you know uh, the entire area factory is lined with concrete and the entire uh, surface area is again connected to the pond area so that is one of the practical examples what i can tell you that the surface water is being collected now suppose uh, one farmer is having 20 acres of land mm. he want to collect entire water into the one pond how can we avoid the mud and uh, you will have to have drains continuously stage wise uh, yes. filtration stage wise filtration is a must you have must. done any project in that line uh, there is one project uh, of krishnendra nursery where he has uh, you know collected the entire uh, rain water into the pond we are I going there tomorrow, tomorrow we are visiting it okay okay so that will give you a perfect idea of how the entire surface water can be collected i mean uh, he is a very good farmer and he'll be you know that will really give you a correct picture about the whole thing okay right